Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to another video. Uh, this is going to be a more chilled out party report sort of video. I'm not going to go through the productions of the Revision Demo Party. I'm going to tell more about my experience leading up to going to the party and how the party was for me in particular. Uh, so if you're looking for production reviews and that kind of stuff, check the comments on Puet and check the monthly report later in the month. Um, so this video will be about my trip, uh, the stuff that I was involved with organizing uh, for the event, because I was semi-organizer of, of some sort for revision, and uh, the production that I did, TKD, and uh, what that was about as well, like working on the production and, and what it was presented. Um, so, revision was, uh, was uh, announced a little bit late, everybody was waiting for it to get announced that it was physically back at the e-work uh, for quite a long while it wasn't only announced like over on december uh, which for me feels like it was too short it should have been previously announced already before um and i booked my tickets immediately the moment i heard that it was going to be uh, physically organized and uh, i was arriving friday night and i was li uh, leaving uh, monday afternoon so it all sounded fine i wouldn't miss much probably miss the meteorics like i did in a few other um uh, physical uh, uh, editions of revision in 2019 2018 i think i caught about the same flight and i arrived just after the meteorics uh, which was fine because I wasn't nominated for anything and I wasn't this year. I wasn't part of the jury either I, I slightly forgot to to register which was good because I didn't have that much free time anyways um, So yeah, I was involved with that uh, but I did uh, end up uh, helping uh, Shayna with uh, some social media stuff um, So uh, I had a lot of talks before before revision was announced at all on the importance of social media and what we could do on this uh, modern day and age to not just be a physical event and not just be something that happens on the weekend but actually doing something to build up to that event and uh, try to figure out ways to help newcomers uh, go into the demo scene uh, and revision already does already did already plan to do uh, some things in that regard uh, some very important things like the newcomer table uh, introduction seminars that kind of stuff but um i always thought that we could do more us overall as the demo scene and revision being the biggest pure demo scene event it felt like they should be leading the banner on that regard and that they weren't doing enough and since it's very easy to criticize uh, instead of stepping up and just doing the stuff i thought okay so um i'm gonna I'm gonna step up and try to help in whatever i can so um I was talking with Shayna, she was involved with the social media team at, at uh, Revision already and uh, DFOX was happy to, to have me on board. So I joined and had a few brainstorm meetings with Shayna trying to figure out what we could do besides just doing the regular announcements of stuff that is coming to the party late minute as things are popping up uh, as usually revision does what could what extra stuff could we uh, do and we had a lot of interesting ideas um a lot of them fell through for one reason or another um and i think if we had more time if revision had been previously announced uh, a bit ahead of time and if we had a few more dedicated people if we had time to recruit people to do this proper planning throughout throughout uh, the months we could have done a lot more uh, in terms of accessibility for newcomers and things like that um we ended up not doing many things but one of the things that i ended up focusing on was the hype videos uh, compo hype videos i initially wanted to do one for every single uh, competition but i soon realized there was one month left and 28 uh, compos uh, at at uh, at revision, so we, it would very unlikely happen that I would cover all the compos. Um, still managed to cover quite a few. Uh, one of the main ones, I also the one the, one of the original ideas was actually to get either 
compo organizer or an old time participant to uh, give their views. So it's not just me talking about my perceptions of the competition, but someone who is actually more involved with those competitions in particular. And I did that with a couple of compos, not all of them. Um, but yeah, considering the time constraints, I'm happy with what we did, and I think it was I think it was a good addition to the party. Uh, could have done a bit more officially, maybe, but then we would have to go through more I don't know validation steps and stuff like that, and we didn't have time for that, and organizers didn't really have you know free time to go through that as well. So um, they gave me a green card and they let me put up on my channel, which is fine to put up on my channel. It means I get more views. So I was very happy with that. Um, but but yeah, I mean, we could have done a lot more. Uh, one of the ideas that we thought and that I still think we should do is try to have a way to explain demo scene culture to complete newcomers. So like... When you're playing a new game for the first time, you have these pro tips that show up here and there, just explaining the basic things that you should, everyone should know, but that it's very easy to forget or to do. So, so it's like pro tips of some sort. And uh, we could easily have done something like that, explaining a demo scene culture, like what is a competition? Uh, why are we like this? Where did demo scene come from? The difference between the different platforms, you know, what is the difference between an Amiga 500 and an Amiga AGA? Things like that, small things like that, which we could like round up, you know, hundreds of facts, small facts, concise uh, text and um, put it available as as information that could just be like, you know, in a corner, not really annoy anyone, uh, maybe in the slide rotation, maybe in, in the in the. Um, social media communication and would explain some things of the culture and maybe the memes the the tropes of of the demo scene to newcomers so uh we wouldn't have to keep answering you know what is the song that is playing on the animated gif all the veteran demo seniors know that scotch and finn sprit but all the newcomers are like what the hell is happening why do they play this song what is this song what the hell does they have to do with the demo scene you know those kind of things can scare newcomers away or can can easily start building up it's not just one thing it's the combination of all of these different things starts being too much information to to really harness so it would be nice to dilute it on the party hype up and also have it some somehow embedded into the slide rotation of, of some sort um which was an idea that we were already planning to to do for inertia and i tried to bring to revision but we really didn't have time and and uh, people power to implement it properly um the other idea that we had and that we wanted to do was try to make some sort of documentary about the event but uh and we even had equipment for that but um i was too busy dealing with organization stuff for other for other things so um i couldn't pick up that i usually if you follow my my channel you know that sometimes i do some uh, video reports when i go to demo parties i did for evoke i did for revision in the past just randomly interview some people or record a little bit of uh, the party atmosphere at different moments in time so you have some sort of um recollection or small archive of what the party spirit was like um and it, it's a great, it, it's very different from being at the party place and seeing it remotely. Um, and it helps break the bridge for newcomers as well, that they don't know what the party is about. And if say, they see these kind of contents, they have a more, a better feeling of what it is like to be there at, at that moment and get the full uh, experience out of it. So yeah, I had this brilliant idea. Wow, we can make a documentary about revision completely. We just need, you know, to shoot a lot of footage and record a few interviews, brainstorm a few ideas, and it should be easy, and we could do it. And um, quickly we realized that no one had time for that. And originally I wanted to do with Genio, but Genio also wasn't really in the mood for it. I was too busy with it. We didn't end up recruiting anyone, so it fell through. I still think the idea is awesome and great 
like uh, there have been some documentaries about the demo scene in the past and i think we could easily do very interesting documentaries as well again in the future even focus on just a single party would already be excellent in my humble opinion um to show the whole party mood and, and things because all the party reports that you see so far is just you know amateur cameras going around and randomly filming things and asking stuff with people awkwardly avoiding the camera and it doesn't really uh, it's not easy to digest it's not something that you sit in front of and see and then come out with a clear picture of things it's like many hours of different bits and pieces and it would be very much more interesting if you do a proper documentary about it you no know, proper camera quality proper crew dedicated to thing that must TV did a few reports like this um but it would be good to have a more uh lengthier sort of feature going a bit more in depth into you know why are this and that people going in the demo scene or even just following a couple of demo sceners throughout their maybe a newcomer an old person someone from the combo team that has like a a, a very strongly previously experience with all of these kind of systems um get the different views find a way to tell the story of what happened at the party place uh, through that way and capture the vibe of the whole thing which um, I don't think there have been that many documentaries about the demos in doing that there were some that spe focus specific I'm talking about the Moldman documentaries in particular they focus very well on the Hungarian demo scene explaining generally what the demo scene is but they haven't focused on like a single demo party and a single event or like the road to something which I really think is a really cool concept in terms of storytelling and could really work very well uh, for a short documentary of some sort but um, we need dedicated team for that so that means if you're doing it with demo sceners you need to find a couple of demo sceners that have free time for that party and focus specifically on that and prepare the things and then the edit work that comes afterwards is also uh, not very trivial um, so so yeah another option would be to try to reach out to documentary documentary makers of other stuff to see if they would be interested in picking this concept up and do something about the demo scene itself um and there are a few names a few ideas that floated around but uh not for this revision this revision was too short notice to do that but it's an idea that i will keep in the back of my head and if someone else is interested someone from the demo scene is interested in and also um you know picking this up and taking it making it a reality by all means uh reach out to me and we can talk about things and i can i can help you make it happen or uh or you know uh, figure something out anyways those were the ideas i ended up just doing a bunch of videos hyping up the different competitions i think it was fun um might have become a bit boring towards the end but i also was quite excited about some of the competitions so i think it made some pretty good videos uh, a couple of them i didn't have time to prepare very well because i wanted to rush them out a few of them i was very sick while recording them i was like uh, deaf from both ears during a weekend and trying to do the first videos because i had um a nasty flu that infected my ears and i ended up being uh deaf for for a few days uh with pain and stuff so uh so not horrible excruciating pain i could still function but uh it wasn't fun it wasn't fun but i managed to power through it and record the videos make them fun and accessible so it was it was a cool experience and people people seemed to enjoy it and resonated with it so that was that was cool to see um so that was the help that I did for the social media team at at uh, at Revision. Um, what else? Um, at some point, uh, we noticed that Havoc wasn't uh, continuing the work that he did organizing the live coding events for Revision. Uh, he decided to leave the Revision uh, team this year for different reasons that are none of my business and none of your business either it's it's uh, between havoc and uh, the revision team and uh, i was asking defox while i was talking about social media stuff uh, do you have anyone for the live code stuff are you is this happening again this year because you know i have a community of uh, live coders on my discord they all ask me is shader showdown happening again this year what's happening with revision and i don't know what to tell them so uh 
are we planning anything? What's what's the project here? And he's like, no clue, haven't thought about that yet. Uh, and I'm like, okay, if you want me to help out with that, I'm, I'm available for that. Um, have some way of have all handing things out to me so I know more or less what to expect from the vision and you handle all the logistics of setting up stuff and I handle the logistics of you know getting people and planning what would be the best um, the best uh, concept of event to have regarding live coding stuff so uh, the box was happy to have me I became more involved talked with a few different organizers about different things that we could do proposed uh, a set of things to do a jam with remote entries to do the typical shader showdown because it's you know it's uh recurring thing on a revision so i didn't really want to change the format completely because if it was entirely up to me i would do shader royale because that's my favorite uh, thing but uh but i wanted to keep the legacy of the shader showdown uh, in place and then i talked with bod who was in charge of doing the live events uh the other live event stuff of scheduling the other uh, djs that were and live acts that were playing at the party and a few were missing some some uh, visuals so i suggested a few things and and uh, like I hooked up uh, Mantratonic to do visuals for uh, Matt Dix. Um, and I was also helping with a few others. Flopin was already booked to help Thorno Trigger. Coop was already booked to, to help uh, Luguber with his visuals. And I ended up suggesting something for Hoffman set, which was to do a Shader Royale, but in a jam format. So like not eliminatory, no comments, just Hoffman playing music and whoever wants to live code can join in and live code and we can show it on screen. Um, Bot loved the idea. He said he was all for it. I pitched it to, to, uh, to Defox. He was all for it. So, uh, great. Um, I suddenly record that we have some issues. Uh, I, I suddenly remember that we had some issues with uh, Royale during Inertia, mostly because of the machine, or I thought was the machine, but I decided to do a proper bug hunt on that. So I set up uh, a bounty award for, for people to help me figure out what's wrong with the, with the, with the thing. It turned out it was resizing Bonesomatic a lot that made uh, the, the texture indexes overflow and start causing some corruption. So um, we managed to iron that out, which was really cool, uh, not just for us uh, who are doing the Royale, but also um, Observer is planning to use that at uh, sessions later in the month as well. And uh, so it's also, it's just better to have a more stable tool overall. Um, so yeah, took care of that, pinged everyone on the live coder uh, channel, see if they were up for it, either the jam session, either with the Katie or Ponsomatic or the shader showdown itself. And um, ended up, uh, since we were looking for new machines, because the old ones were over eight, year old, eight years old and starting to give blue screens and stuff, um, I thought, okay, if we're looking for new machines, can we get three machines instead of two machines? Because then we, have, we can have one more person live coding on stage. And that would be cool for different sorts of reasons. Uh, the main reason is that the showdown would be less rounds. So if we have the same number of people or approximately the same number of people, we can do less rounds. We can either do uh, three ways on the semifinals and then a final just being head to head, one versus one, or we can do complete three ways like we ended up doing. If we have nine participants, you have three ways all the way and you all have two rounds, which some people might be a bit against it but uh, i think the majority of people are in favor especially the coders because they don't want to prepare three different entries just coding one enough is already stressful that like preparing a single entry having a specific idea and you don't want to redo the same thing on the second round so you need at least uh, two and if you pass to the final round then you will have to do your best work ever completely unprepared uh, so um, a lot of people always complain to me about that and it was one of the major stress inducing things about the shader showdown was that they would have to prepare multiple things and it would be double the effort pretty much uh, than just preparing one. So having two rounds was a bit better. Also, you have more things happening on screen. So if one of them, for some reason, is not really doing very well, you still have some interesting stuff happening. Um, so I really like that concept and visually in terms of the arranging things on OBS is not that hard to 
to accomplish comparing to one versus one. Uh, we recruited Difty, who had helped with the online editions to come on site and, and do the stuff. Uh, Aldroid was on site to configure the machines since I was not able to, to be present earlier. Well, technically speaking, I could have rebooked my flights to arrive earlier. But one, I have family commitments, which I can't leave my wife stranded with my kid uh, for more days than I should. And uh, two, the prices were like doubled by, by that time. So I would have to buy a new ticket costing double what I had already paid. And my finances don't allow me. I, I'm, I'm, if you don't know, I currently try to do full-time uh, content uh, creation stuff. Get a little bit money from my uh, net label, for managing the net label for a few uh, works that I do there. But it barely pays the bills. And then I have uh, the YouTube channel that you're seeing right now. And I have the Patreon channel, which amounts, I think it's around $100 a month or something like that, which is, you know, nothing. It's nice to sometimes buy new gear or something like that to upgrade the quality of the channel. Like I bought a new camera. I bought a table stand uh, a few months ago. Helps with those things, but it doesn't, it will not cover 600 journey trip to to uh to to germany uh which is also one of the reasons that i won't be going to as many demo parties as i wish i was outside i'll probably just go to revision this year um if i can afford another one if there's someone helping me out with with expenses for traveling there i would probably very gladly go there but I, uh out of my own money it's Fiscally irresponsible of me as a parent of a young kid to uh, start using my savings uh, to, to go to random demo parties that don't bring any income back uh, while, I'm, uh, while I could be doing the time to do you know, things that actually bring income. So, yeah. What, what was I saying? Yeah, I could uh, rebook the flights, but I ended up not doing it for multiple reasons. One of them being money. The the second one, family, um, stressed me a lot because I, I I I knew that you should be at the party place. Um, I trusted that the machines would end up would show up in time and that Android would configure them. I have a few talks with Android to Android to make sure that they were uh, on top of those things, had the checklist of things uh, to check. Chaos also helped. He had some experience setting that up on previous years as well. Um, Steltech did a great job setting up stops on stage because he already knew what to do with, uh, with the Havoc. I had no clue it was even Steltech was in charge of that. I had no clue of what the plan was. They asked me for a layout of stuff on stage like while I was traveling on the last day so it was impossible for me to even think about that i just assumed someone was considering things already which of course doesn't happen i need to double check all of these things and in hindsight i should have had um, also another hiccup we had with the live coders was the the djs i just assumed okay these four people designated you figure out for yourselves who wants to go first and they were all like well i don't know do you want to go do you want to go i don't know uh, ps do you want to say who is first and I'm like no you guys decide do whatever you want uh, i i don't want to you know i don't want to bother with that i whatever you think is fine but no one ended up deciding so then the the crew on site did not know who was the first person to start the djs did not know who was the first person to start. and in hindsight i should have just said okay you are first you are second you are third previously like one day before so they would have known and would have been relayed uh, properly no small things like that getting extra textures at the last minute which didn't even cross my head just uh someone was asking are there textures this year i'm like uh sure why not we had some last year uh, let's try to get maybe a new one which no one ended up using um so that was a bit useless but at least the revision logo was used so that was that was good um 
so yeah, a lot of things like that and uh, the confusion between being three different events um, and the changing between the formats that also happened. A lot of the people that I had already pinged, I had to reconfirm things. Uh, also had to confirm if people were coming physically. Um, for the showdown, we wanted only to have physical people uh, on site because they are on stage. For the Tick 80 jam, um, originally the original idea was actually to have a jam that would be both physical and remote. So we would have four windows at the same time and we would see two people on stage and two people remote. And then when we got free machines, we ended up concluding, okay, let's just focus on Tick 80 uh, in person and then everybody who was interested in doing stuff remotely will end up putting on the on the shader royal jam for hoffman set which worked pretty well i think um delays with stuff setting up uh, shader showdown because everything was already delayed on the first day it happens it's normal for a big party uh have logistical things on the first day um there's always some late minute things that happens uh the meteoric itself were a bit delayed the showdowns ended up being about an hour delayed but uh everything in terms of the technology was already in place Difty had already configured everything on the machine outright had already configured everything on the on the um, on the stage machines as well uh, stealth tech had handled the uh, logistics to get the audio working on all of the machines so we were pretty much uh, good to go um so yeah, I think Shader Showdown went well. Overall, I think people liked the freeway format. Uh, we ended up having the three cameras also on stage, which was initially discussed that we would probably not get. So I was happy to see that surprise when I arrived at the party place. So yeah, big thank to everyone who involved in, in helping that stuff out. Defox, C-Rex, uh, CGI, uh, Still Tech is building everything up. Uh, Drogven, uh, Aldroid building up the machines. Chaos for all the the backup support. Chaos was like my panic button. If something fails, I say, people, you you can talk with Chaos because he knows what he's doing. They didn't use it very much, which was good, but I was able to sleep at night knowing that if something happened with my chip or something happened with my phone, Chaos would be there to solve the issue. So thank you very much for Chaos for being the backup plan as well. Uh, the commentators as well, Difty. Difty did a great job preparing everything. He already had the experience from the online, but the freeway was different and he did a great job. He also had like an external controller. He could use touch OCS to control uh, OBS. Ended up even tagging it to gamepad, went to the middle of the audience during the, the final to, to control things from the middle of the audience. Insane stuff. Big love to Difty for preparing all of that as well. Uh, Aldroid, as I also mentioned, uh, went over her <laughs> over her pre-established pre, pre or pre-prepared uh, responsibilities to, to set everything up. Um, Havoc also helped some stuff on uh, the online, giving information uh, uh, on the uh, Discord channel to, to the different coders and stuff like that. Um, who else? I'm probably forgetting something. All the people who helped commentate. Uh, Totetmat. Totetmat did a great job also preparing the infographics. Uh, the Watcher helped spam things a lot. Um, Thought it might help me commentate as well. Uh, Genio also stepped up to commentate last minute. Uh, Blackle was on standby to do remote uh, commentating, but we ended up concluding that it was too much work to set things up to be able to have a remote commentator in. It was possible. It was just very stressful to do it last minute. So production decided maybe not, and I, I didn't want to argue with them about that. I didn't want to push it because I know how stressful these, these things are. Um, well, Super Oak also stepped up to help commentating uh, last minute, and I think those were all the commentators we got. KB for running all the Beam Team stuff, uh, it's always a pleasure to work with. Um, yep, I think that's everyone. Uh, Zephoid for hyping up the commentary on doing scene set as well. He, he was a bit lost on what exactly we were doing, I had to step in to help him uh, explain to him a little bit what was happening, but that was fun as well. Um, so yeah, I think the Shader Showdown went well uh, overall. Uh, I hope people are happy. Let me know in the comments what did you think about the Shader Showdown. Did you think it worked? Did you think it was what could have been improved about it? What do you think comparing it to the original uh, one versus one? I'm uh, very curious to hear the feedback about that. What I heard from the coders was that it was good. A lot of them just participated just for 
uh, chills as fillers and they did not want to go to the final. We had a couple of people that were like, please don't let me go to the final. I don't have anything prepared. If I go to the final, I'm going to be stressed the hell out of my mind. Uh, so please let me know ahead of time the results from the qualifiers so I can stop stressing about that. Uh, I think it worked fine in the end. We had very cool qualifiers, very cool final. Uh, so I was very happy with that. Um, Oh yeah, the DJs as well. Uh, Subi did a very good job, he, although he did plug in his uh, set to uh, the wrong plug uh, there. Uh, I thought I mistake, I assume, uh, and he did make some weird uh, feedback noises on the on the PA because of that. Uh, but you know, honest mistake can happen to the best. Lugober for helping out and and keeping me in check as well. He was one of the person who set me aside. I was like, okay, this was a bit of a mess. Uh, you need to step up uh, tomorrow. And I'm like, yep. Yeah. Heard you, Jeff. You are completely correct. I will, I will uh, double check everything right now. Uh, and uh, yeah, the next day went a lot smoother. Saturday went a lot smoother. The Shader Showdown. No, everybody on stage, 15 minutes ahead. Uh, DJ uh, Alkama. I also talked with Alkama to set up things uh, 15 minutes ahead. Test everything. Uh, test all the keyboards, different layouts of keyboards. So everybody was already 15 minutes before this started. Everybody was ready, and we ended up having with a lot of buffer time after the Shader Showdown. Uh, that people were like, frankly, I strongly recommended that we should not go over the the, the time today. And I'm like, okay, we're ready to go. <laughs> the delay should I, will probably not come from our side. We are not the bottleneck here, so let's uh, we're ready to go. Fifteen. If you want us fifteen minutes ahead to test everything, we're ready. Just message everyone, and uh, we're good to go. Um, so yeah. Shader Showdown, I think, went uh, rather well overall. Tick 80 Jam, we had a lot of issues uh, setting stuff up last minute because we hadn't had time to check anything uh, because they just checked the stuff for the Ponzomatic and not for the Tick 80 instance. And you might think, oh, it's exactly the same. No, it's not exactly the same. Uh, the server is different. It doesn't go to the internet and back. It goes to the direct IP that needs to be running on the machine. And of course, when you try to run the server, Windows said, uh, we can't open the server on port 444. And we were like, oh, is this a firewall? Is this a local firewall? Is this a network firewall? Are there any random Belgians here that run the network? And we check this and people are like, no, it should be connected because you can you can ping the other machine and stuff. So you should be able to just open. So why the hell wasn't the port open? Is it a firewall? Let's check. Is Python listed on the firewall? Is that the problem? And I remembered a few years ago, I was running an interactive installation and Windows just refused to open ports. And it's because the standard changed to only allow ports to be open uh, above 10,000 on the custom application. So unless you're running a native application signed by Microsoft, you cannot open ports below 10,000. And that was the problem that Aldroid was having trying to run the server, because the server uses port 444, 4444, 44, 44s, uh, which is below 10,000. So I told, hmm. first I had already told them, try to use port 80 because, you know, um, even if you have a firewall in place, port 80 should just go. Uh, but we were all lost trying to figure out what happened and they, we didn't even test port 80. It probably would have worked if we tested port 80. And then I suggested, you know, put a one in front of it, put a, you know, a higher level port to see if it works because I remembered I had this issue before. And we tried that and it worked. So I go, 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 go to the stage. We're like two minutes behind what we should be. And we also stress trying to get the audio working because Bonzomat in Bonzomatic you can configure if you listen to the desktop or if you listen to an input on TIC80, you can't. It just captures whatever is happening on desktop. And of course, we don't have the PA sound playing on the desktop on the machine. So we could install voice meter and reroute that but uh, kb looked at me like uh sure you can fuck up our machine that's fine we'll just reconfigure everything so we tried not to fuck up with the machine and not install voice meter we thought we had a solution to reroute stuff to play it uh on the normal windows audio configuration to replay what is coming on the inline as the desktop and I could have swore we tested it and it was working because the bars were moving when we call the FFT function. But then a few minutes later, when people were actually using it during the actual session, it wasn't working anymore. 
uh, and we couldn't figure it out mid show so they ended up not using the the FFT function which was sad because it has a lot of potential for a lot of cool things and the music was banging so you could definitely use it for things but I think people still had fun and overall a lot of people were just wondering what the hell is happening because they haven't really heard of Lua before or the or the bite battle jam thing so I think we brought more awareness to that little thing which Field Effects by the way organizes every every Monday Every Monday evening, they organize a, a Tick80 a Byte Jam session, uh, which is really cool. And um, so, yeah, if you like coding for retro platforms, uh, if you like coding for fantasy consoles, even uh, Lua is very annoying to get into, but uh, it's also very fun. Tick80 platform is very fun to, to do stuff as well, uh, to test little ideas, prototype little ideas. So, yeah, highly recommend you checking it out. So yeah, that went well. Um, well, 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 went as well as it probably was. At least we had a lot of participants interested at the party place, so we had a we managed to do enough seat rotation to accommodate everyone for the one hour and a half. I think we had we had some extra time, which is really cool. Um, what else? Um, the shader jam, uh, the shader royale jam. That was really cool. That was fucking awesome. Uh, a lot easier to set up, just went to the computer that Difty had used it, I didn't even need to use OBS, just need a, one machine, log in with Discord on the, on the, on the browser, click the captures that the, the, the cats are cats, um, and um, launch the launcher. Uh, that Nusen has been uh, developing throughout the pandemic years and just add people. People who would have messaged me saying they don't want to participate, copy paste the message saying this is the room number you need to connect. You know, download Bonsomatic Network version, connect to this room, tell me what username you're using, add them to the screen. Gabriel's like, tell me when you're ready. I'm already ready. Like I already have three, four people on screen. Whenever you want to show, we are ready to show. Like, okay, great. So uh, that was really easy to set up, like one minute setup, just copy paste Bosomatic from my pen drive, log into to, uh, to, to Discord, start adding people on the launcher, done. Um, we had a, a VJ account set up by Totetmat, which had shaders from previous editions of um, of other parties but mostly revision but also a few other parties some like killer uh, shaders that were just randomly picked and changed every 15 seconds i believe uh, so that was one of the accounts that was running and then everything else was people who joined live and coded live from scratch they could have copy pasted some other stuff uh, if they wanted like pre-prepared materials and some people did that but most of it was coded from scratch and you could see in the beginning the tunnel and you see a ball and it's very boring in the beginning I had to switch to the VJ account a lot uh, to accommodate for that. But then people started building up their scenes and having interesting stuff. Hoffman's music was complete banger. I wanted so much to be down there in the marsh pit dancing away with everyone else. People were dancing on the beam team. The whole thing was shaking. I was trying to click the name of the next person that I want to switch to and I couldn't click the right thing. I would click the same name by mistake and, and things would go in, back into Bozak view. So uh, it was very fun. It was very fun. Um, there was also some very cool feature on the launcher which is uh, I can use the numbers to switch uh, the the to the usernames uh, directly. So yeah, people from all over the world, from, from Japan, from, uh, from Argentina, coding live some people at the party place as well actually people at the party place had more trouble connecting than people remotely because they had to use the wi-fi at the party place and the wi-fi at the party place was subpar it didn't work ethernet worked fine was flawless but wi-fi was completely overloaded wouldn't get more accounts whenever i tried to use wi-fi on my on my mobile i just ran out I, it just wouldn't work I, I managed to make it work like once throughout the entire party and i tested like six seven different times throughout throughout the, the event i ended up using my mobile plan ran out of mobile plan data in in like the first evening uh, just checking stuff on Discord and communicating with people, with people on Discord. I'll probably have a bill of, of uh, mobile data uh, roaming charges to, to, to pay next month. Um, but yeah, um, but we did manage to get like over 12 people coding, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if it's probably more than that, probably 16, 20. Some people who had contacted me during the first day of the party saying, oh, can I join? I said, yes. And then they didn't respond back to me don't know what the hell was up with that 
um, wish we could have had more would have been fun to have more don't know why people uh, didn't want to poke me about it doing that I think a lot of people had the idea that I'm telling them to tell me their username and they feel that like I'm too busy and it's too late it's not VZ joined like 20 minutes mid thing I can it's very easy to add people on on uh, when they're doing the, the shader royale it's just click the add coder button type the name enter shows up on the mosaic and I see the red square saying if it's on if it's online if it's offline and I tell the person you're not I'm not seeing you or I see you go 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 and that's it so it's just you know if you ping me the name on discord I see it right there and I can just add it immediately so it's completely trivial and I just reply with a thumbs up that I added you and you're on and then you're part of the fun so next party make sure you join it's it's i think it's fun a lot of people who participated for the first time really had a cool time the french corner was going mad like they were all next to each other on the corner in the back of the hall uh having a lot of fun uh, from what they told me there are photos of them um started adding extra shaders because they noted there was missing some things or they wanted to make fun of, of flopine so like, instead of being flopine it's flopin which is the male version of flopin so they they started making a lot of gags and they 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 had a lot of fun they told me they had a, a blast watching their shaders not just their shaders that they were coding now but uh, the stuff they had made previously uh, part of the vj account that was also that also showed up now and again uh, i had a lot of fun vjing it was very cool um not everything was on point because i was still you know checking you know some shaders are more flashy some shaders are more build up some shaders are more silly cute kind of things and you need to find the right momentum for each one and when i ran out of things to show i would go to the vj the random shader account uh, random previous good shader account and sometimes would fit sometimes would not fit had some very good moments like when the the laser refraction thing from Nusan was going and the uh, the the track was all complete chill that was like perfect moment uh when the butterflies were flapping also was a great moment that really matched what was happening a lot of nice little accidents that happened um Gar guys shader also looked awesome uh, on a few uh interactive moments and yeah i had a lot of fun uh, doing that vj I definitely want to do something similar again in the future maybe more prepared more more of those previous shaders uh, but uh, divided by by formats like uh, cute stuff uh, flashing stuff progressive stuff um, those kind of different tag categories so that i know that if i press one i will always have something cute happening so that's that's one of the ideas and we've been spitballing a few more ideas on how to improve uh, the launcher for future events as well so uh yeah if you're planning a big event in the future and want uh, live dj uh, live live uh, coded visuals for it or if you're trying to organize a showdown and everybody tells you that they are scared to code because it's too stressful to code for a competitive event consider running a, a royale jam you know and just having people at the party place but also remotely and it's very easy to reach that community just reach me out i add you to my to my discord and you can ping everyone there we have like over 40 50 people listed there uh, which um at one moment or another they could be interested in just participating uh for for a jam session so yeah hoffman love the concert just a shame i was down there dancing but i danced a lot upon the beam team um also i saw the recording afterwards great work by Cyrix. i think it was acrid doing the the lights as well people with the cameras down there great mix overall really cool really cool really love the i'm so happy to have been part of this it was really great to 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 be able to contribute in in a in a small way and i really got me excited about vj like doing vj properly not just switching usernames around but you know preparing stuff you know thinking about that as a as a concept so we'll definitely try to to look more into that in the future what else is there left to talk already 45 minutes holy shit we're running a bit late but uh, i have to talk about my tick 80 demo so tick 80 demo on uh, i 
I've noticed that I wasn't having any production for the, the party, so I decided I should try to do something. I originally wanted to do a 64K on JavaScript. It was really hard to get music for that, so I ended up uh, hunting for Tick80 musician. Uh, Keneal stepped up to do something, so I thought, awesome, whatever you got. He decided for this swamp reggae sort of vibe. And it reminded me of zombies because my kid has been uh, pretending to be a zombie for, for quite a few months now. Uh, he starts doing, and I say, oh, you have to put your mouth out, otherwise it's not a real zombie. And he goes, ah, ah, ah. and then he comes and bites me in the arm and now you're a zombie too. And we are both zombies go down the street and everybody looking at us like we are crazy people. So we've been doing a lot of that and then uh, transforming into robots like powering down. And you have to go to his back, switch the battery and say, oh, now you're good. And he goes, beep, beep, pop, pop. So uh, we've been doing that a lot. And I thought, why not use that aesthetic in a demo? Why not? It's as good a theme as any. It sort of fits the music in the swamp vibe aesthetic, like dark, weird shit. Um, and yeah, so I tried to reuse a few effects that I had done for uh, mountain bites and stuff like that and some older effects. Um, Keneal reached out to Evil Paul, who has also been doing some Tick 80 stuff. And Canil has a group with Evil Paul called Miku.com, which they have been doing some, some uh, cool demos uh, before. And Evil Paul submitted a couple of effects, saw the preview, gave me some feedback as well, uh, did the killer final scene as well with the Life Force D make of the moon and then the hand grabbing the moon. That was a really cool scene as well. Um, so yeah, I contributed a few effects. Uh, I managed to iron out the thing. Somehow, at some point, I started doing some scene poetry for the demo and a sort of theme started creeping up and I decided to roll with it. So the theme ended up being that, uh, you know, you are a zombie robot in life and um, you should not be a zombie robot in life. You should enjoy life uh, to what it is and not... Uh, just do what you're told and, and uh, keep your head down and, and do the work. You know, you should aspire to your dreams. You should strive to be a better person um, and not just, you know, don't party to forget that you're part of the zombie. Do some actual steps to change the life, live the life that you want to live. I think that's the ultimate uh, things. And uh, can you summarize it with be happy, it's salmiaki, which I'm happy with. Um, so yeah, I was very happy with the demo, I, I thought we had something cool, uh, lots of effects, so I won't have the usual, oh, it's too short thing, the music was good, uh, had at least two, three parts to it, um, I kind of started wishing the demo was slightly bigger, so we had the chance of winning uh, something at the actual combo, but I was happy there was like a solid demo. Um, Keneal and Eva, Eva Paul had some issues watching on their computers, because they had Macs, uh, if they recompiled from source, if Paul recompiled uh, Tick80 uh, Mac edition from source and it was running properly. So it's the latest official Tick80 release on Mac is a bit behind on the Windows PC version. So it has some slowdown issues with the music, which screws everything up. So um, I decided to record the video to be on the safe side so they would play my demo properly. And I wrote on the Compo Orga comments, uh, should run fine on the Windows Tick 80 version of, uh, of uh, latest Windows Tick 80 version. If it does not, here is the video, you can play this video. Seems the organizers completely ignored uh, my comment, did not check it at all. They did a recording on the Mac, uh, which had all the replay bugs that I previously mentioned. Two of the scenes were black screen and uh, the final scene with the moon that was the climax of the demo where the hand reached out and grabbed the moon. The hand did not reach out because everything was slowed down, so the hand never showed up before it switched scene. So I was a bit pissed. I was quite pissed. I was a very pissed, actually. Um, it ruined the compo for me. I was watching, we were still mid-compo at that time, and I was completely pissed. I didn't pay attention to the next two, three, four demos, because I was just brewing about it and then talking with people on Discord. They, you know, People came to me and said, oh, it's a great demo. Like, no, it played wrong. The music was wrong. The scenes were slow. It was missing two scenes. You didn't see the climax. It was shit. Um, but people liked it overall. They told me it was, you know, 
true to the old poem spirit of being, you know, whimsical, but uh, with some decent effects as well. Had the mandatory tunnel there. Uh, had like a silly message as well. Uh, a silly, slight serious message as well in it. Um, I'm happy with the demo that we make. I'm happy with the feedback. I just wish that they had seen the proper version of the demo. Uh, anyways, demo is released. It's uh, the video is uh, uploaded now. I hope people watch it on its how it's supposed to be, and hope to get comments on that instead of the buggy version that you saw at the party place. Um, but yeah, other than that, the compo was really good. It was surprisingly amount of entries. There were a few other Tick 80 entries as well, which was also really cool to see. I loved Quad Trip's uh, demo style. Uh, Matchatronic also did something with J Truck, which was also cool. Ali also did something, which was also uh, cool to see. So we had four Tick 80 entries overall. Some people are saying that we might have a fantasy console um, competition at Revision next, next year which would be interesting to see, and I would definitely participate in that. Uh, there is one plan for assembly already uh, for this summer assembly uh, edition. So uh, Fantasy also definitely is starting to become a thing in the demo scene. And uh, I'm, I'm very much in favor of it because I like Fantasy consoles. I know there are a few grumpy cats out there. Let's not name any names. <coughs> Guard guy who don't really like Fantasy consoles that much or wish that people would... Uh, graduate to use his words graduate from using fantasy consoles into using you know doing proper demos on proper uh pcs but for me i i i think you should do demos in whatever platform um you like whatever makes you happy you shouldn't be miserable doing a demo for a platform that you hate doing boilerplate code for um so yeah that's my stance another video might be in order to to go fully deep into that um so yeah was a bit miserable about that experience in particular um after i calmed down and it was really cool because i was miserable about that i was grumpy going outside and uh i i told louisa and we hugged a little bit because same thing happened to our entry as well uh they they played it wrong so we hugged a little bit and cried a little bit that uh, we try so hard, but things still fuck up. And uh, I was getting myself some comfort food uh, and um, a random person that I just, I, I talked with them a couple of times on, on Discord before came to tell me that, oh, P.S. I just wanted to say that you do a great job for the demo scene, all the stuff that you do. Thank you so much. And that really made my day. I mean, uh, it's... You do all these videos and you think of all of these things for what you do for the demo scene, um, you know, the, the In4K uh, page that no one was maintaining and I had to resurrect it into GitHub form and I try to keep the updates there even though no one else seems to be um, maintaining it. Uh, I still try to keep it somehow relevant and useful. Uh, the live code uh, page as well that no one was bothering to archive all the information of live code events of the demo scene and I had that idea and start putting together and thank you very much Dotted Matt for picking that up and Rashi and Yogi for helping make a decent design uh, out of that and now things are a bit more archived the the beginner's manual art article that I did because I noticed there was this gap that like you're a newcomer to the demo scene. Where do you get started? No one knows, you know. Come to a demo party and get hit by 500 things that you don't really understand. That should be a guide. So I wrote that guide and I put it up and I revised it and, and keep going and make a video version out of it and the stuff like that. And those little things, they really do help uh, newcomers come together. And they come to me and they say, thank you. That really helped. Like I, I would have been like weeks not knowing where to get started if it wasn't for for your content so that it really it's really great to hear those words coming from people directly and i i get a hug free hugs as well sometimes i even get free beer which is also awesome uh so yeah that really lifted my mood so uh 
thank you very much, Nope, for 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 bringing a little joy to my life on that. Also, uh, Spud on the on on the bus back, like uh, I I I didn't know Spud from from anywhere, but they they were like, oh, I know you, like I might not recognize you, sorry, buddy. I'm like, yeah, oh, we see your videos. That's why I know you. I feel like I know you because I see your videos and you do great content. I'm like, oh, thank you so much, thank you, thank you, thank you. And they they keep like, oh, do you want a beer? Do you want a beer? I know like, I need to be sober to do the shader showdown stuff. <laughs> thank you, but I. <laughs> I don't want to get drunk just yet. So uh, it was really great, and I really love that. And and that's I know that's that's one of the biggest reasons that I do those things to help the demo scenes to get that that feedback. You know that you know you're I am contributing something positive to the community. That's one of the main things that I that I like doing this kind of uh, more community driven stuff. So yeah. Uh, not made my day on when I was bummed about uh, about uh, the demo being shown wrong, and um, we ended up having a great conversation. Sanson Stall offered me beer. Uh, Liku offered me beer. Dolmot offered me some yaki. Uh, then Lila tried to get me drunk with some weird check stuff during during a Luguber set, which was great, but was also very dangerous. Uh, fortunately, she also got me a lot of water, so thank you. Um, so yeah, I was very prepared for the compos, and we had some really cool compos overall. Uh, the graphics compos were great. Uh, the the um, 4K compos also pretty cool. Executable graphics was insane as well in terms of quality as expected. PC demo combo, very long combo, so it really showed that a lot of people had been like anxious to do stuff physically again and brought a lot of entries for those competitions the compos that didn't have as many entries were the 8k and the 64k which was really sad to to witness and uh, i don't quite understand why the 64k was thrown into the demo category where they could have done the same thing as they did last year and merged it with the 8k um i don't know i don't understand i didn't ask the organizers about that um, but what a fucking great 64k by by observer that was really great concept and banging music great visuals really cool 64k so definitely really really good makes me wonder about the future of the 64k category though but i'll 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 get philosophical about that on another video i want to talk with a few people about that and a few ideas on how to revitalize the 64k because revision was like the last hallmark for the 64k category there are not that many other parties who have a dedicated 64k and people aiming to do a 64k for um most other parties who end up having a 64k compo end up having to merge it with either the demo compo or the combined intro compo so um i think less and less people are going to start doing uh, are going to keep doing 64ks and there doesn't seem to be much newcomers appeal for the 64k there are no like big uh, established resources they exist just information about them is really scattered not centralized like we have sizecoding.org for tiny size coding and we have in 4k github io for the below in 4k uh, 8k stuff there is nothing similar for the 64k so i'm thinking maybe it should be a good idea to do something like that but uh, at the same time doing that when the scene is from for that specific platform is dying is a bit stupid should have been doing while it's thriving not while it's dying um otherwise we're just archiving history we're not you know promoting its prosperity so it would be nice to have some sort of call for action to have another cool 64k but i'm a bit afraid that it might be artificially inflated um and that people would lose interest after a couple of years once they realize that it's so much more work than doing a demo or doing a 4k um but it's something that i want to talk with a few more people about I already talked with observer about that but i want to talk with um comp organizers from revision uh i want to talk with guard guy because he's always very vocal and, and front running about these things and uh, a few other people who usually do uh, i guess ferris uh, as well who usually do 64ks and the guys from New Ones, maybe, uh, guys from Mercury. Um, you know, to see if, you know, what could we do to, you know, make a cool 64K compo for revision next year? Or are we just, you know, not caring about it and there is a 64K whenever there's a 64K? Um, 
but yeah, that's a topic for another video, and I'll leave that discussion. I'm waiting for the hype of uh, the commenting on all the productions of Revision Dies Down, and then I'll probably create a thread on Poet talking about that a little bit more and trying to get some opinions and trying to uh, figure out a concept, an idea to try to, you know, either make 64K a great again or more accessible. I think the main issue is accessibility. If we make the 64K more accessible for newcomers, we will have more people doing 64Ks instead of doing uh, demos, for example. That's my humble opinion. I could be wrong, but that's what I have, oh, that's what I have in my mind. Um, so yeah, <sighs> coming back from the party, uh, bit of a hangover from all the i'm going to blame it on lila uh for for the check thing whatever that was we mixed with sprite um probably shouldn't have drank as much of that as i did um but uh yeah so the trip on the train wasn't that good uh after i died a little bit on the bathroom it was it was a little bit better for the airplane uh, but yeah, it was rough. It was rough. Only having four hours of sleep, and already I woke up. I was still a bit drunk. Uh, so yeah. But I managed to arrive home. My kid was very happy to see me. I brought some ice cream on the way, so they were all very happy to see me. Had a bath. Very good uh, night's rest. And now I'm up and at him again, trying to to catch up with all the missing to do stuff on my to do list. So including this video. So um, yeah. Let me know what you thought about revision. How was it for you? Did you have fun? Hope you did. Oh, I forgot. I, I got some stickers. From, I got some melon stickers from, from Rez. Yeah, the two kinds of stickers. The normal one and the elite one that reflects. Which, if you turn it around, also says watermelon. Ha! And if you turn it on the side, it has an E. And if you turn it on the other side, it's a three. So it's a multiple purpose sticker that you can use it for multiple things. So yeah. Already thinking about next productions that we could do. Uh, talking with a few people already about that. Kanil wants me to do a pick a weight uh, thing. Uh, Super Rogue was also asking me if we could do maybe a TKD collaboration. So let's see about that. What what happens with that? Um, and we need to get Inertia rolling because we don't have a party place yet. But we do have dates for it. One to three of December. Uh, already uh, aimed that. We need to find a cool party location for that. Otherwise we'll revert to the last year's location which was acceptable but we could do better um so yeah getting hyped for that uh right now i need to chill clean up my to-do list uh and uh then figure out what other stuff i can throw at it so yeah, i hope you enjoyed revision as much as i did i i definitely had a blast it was really cool there were a lot of issues with revision a lot of small things like the wi-fi was shit party mice went down a bunch of times you know all sorts of small things. Uh, I also heard some backstage stories that that uh, didn't leave me very happy to to hear about, and I hope they are they are resolved for for the most part, or that that people are getting help for that. But I think overall, I think it was a good revision. I think uh, the organization did a good job. Um, all parties have issues. Bigger parties have more issues. Uh, I think Acred was making a joke at some point, like uh, how many fuck ups you have in a day. It's, it's more like how many fuck ups per hour you have. <laughs> but it's not the uh, it's not having the fuck ups that matters. It's how you recover from them that really counts. Like uh, pre planning is all very fine and good, but when shit happens, you need to have a cool head and figure out a uh, plan B on the spot to make sure that everything is still on track. And I think overall, revision organizing did that well. Um, there are a lot of points that I would have improved, and I'll talk with D Fox uh, about that to to see uh, uh, if it takes into consideration any of my thoughts. Would be cool if I could contribute in any way to making a better revision for next year. I would be very happy to to uh, call it a, a job well done if I if any of my recommendations gets taken into account. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. See you next video. Bye bye everybody. Sorry for a long video, but I, I you know, revision was such a blast. I had to talk my way through it. Uh, hope it was interesting. Still, let me know in the comments if you had any particular question about any of these topics. All that jazz, blah blah blah. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, all that jazz. And if you like this kind of content that I've been doing throughout the years, Patreon.com/psenough. Whatever you can donate, one euro, two euros, five euros, whatever you can afford, it's very much welcome. I also was talking with Ruari to set up an Amazon wish list, so I'll do a little brainstorm on what kind of hardware would make sense to uh, 
to have on a to wish list and uh, that might be more concrete uh, help and that might motivate people to contribute directly i think a lot of people prefer you know knowing exactly where their money is going instead of just being an ethereal he's paying random bills with that for 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 all his uh uh, blackjack and hookers that he's doing uh, during during the evenings. Um, so yeah, see you next time. Bye bye everybody. Take care.